So you've come to the point in your career where you've actually reached the long-term investments into assets based on the second column of six to 10 years. Well, here's a few tricks to help you get good at what you should be doing at this point during your 365 years to success. Let's make a right left here. Do you have what it takes to make a right left here? What's up, good people? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and thank you for watching my video. If this is your first time to my channel and you want to learn how to succeed in entertainment, do so by subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss out. Large investments come with greater risk, but larger rewards. With smaller investments, you might see anywhere between 10 and 40% return, the 40% obviously on the higher end. With long-term investments, you might actually start out at 40% return and potentially get to a 60, 70, and in some cases, 100%, if not more, on a return. The issue is, there is that greater risk of investing into long-term investments. And the reason is uh, there's more money in and sometimes there's a lot more money out is because we're dealing with larger investments that include real estate, businesses, IOUs, and of course, commodities. The one thing I have learned with large investments is they all have their advantages and disadvantages. It comes down to researching what you are willing to invest and or lose if that would potentially happen. However, research, research, research the above four possible assets you can invest into for long term. However, that fear and ooh, should I or I should I not wariness is the reason we have the three needs of purpose to protect yourself, invest in yourself and to reward yourself be it through security, growth and dream. Now, growth is obviously to invest. Now, a lot of long term investments can be placed into security. However, if you're trying to do a long term investment with a return that you want to maybe compound interest, uh, you might want to handle it with your growth need. So of the four assets within your six to 10 years, you have, as I said earlier, real estate, businesses, IOUs, and of course, commodities. That's how you have to say commodities. Real estate is pretty simple. Uh, you probably already know the answer to this. Uh, the three most general versions of real estate are obviously buy to own, buy to sell, buy to rent. And this includes property and or buildings. Businesses are buying a business and liquidating the business, buying the business and growing the business, buying the business and uh, uh, selling the business, or starting a business by putting money into it and creating it from scratch. IOUs or I O unto with a U. Now, many people think it's U as in Y, but it's not. It's I O unto, which is ultimately you're investing into something and then they owe unto you that money plus a return, usually 10% to 15%. But in every case, equity can change the value of the investment. And of course, commodities. Commodities are traditionally known as, you know, coffee, wheat, uh, things like that, oils, orange juice. But here's a really fun fact. You are a commodity. That's right. What you are capable of doing, your skill level and your particular specific look, feel, sound, thoughts, ideas, the way you talk, everything, your walk, your dance. Even the way you play an instrument, the way you act, the way you tell jokes, you are a commodity. And the more we understand that part of ourselves by knowing our worth, this creates the value of us as a commodity or an asset. Because the truth of the matter is, is, it, is if you are an actor, you should be paid for it. Though the amount you're paid is not necessarily based on your skill level. Your commodity or your value is. So your commodity is your ability to act like a Daniel Day Lewis as a high valued commodity. But that doesn't necessarily mean his brand value is more than say, Brad Pitt, who might garner a bigger paycheck because they know on paper, Brad Pitt has brought more people into the seats. That's brand value. That's a whole other thing. 
So if you know the weight and value of your commodity, you know that you will offer a very unique service. For example, let's say Robert Downey Jr. has a very unique, specific skill when it comes to acting that allowed him to be the right choice for, say, Iron Man. However, his brand value, though it was very low when he first got the Iron Man because of all his personal stuff, it grew in value. And over the course of the movies from Iron Man all the way till now, Avengers 3 and beyond, Robert Downey Jr.'s brand value allowed him to get a paycheck of $50 million during Avengers 2. The reason was is because they knew people wanted to see Robert Downey Jr., because he got that money mostly on the back end and he had that control because they were willing to give him what they wanted, uh, uh, what him and his team wanted because of A, his brand value and B, his commodity dictated that he would bring the real professionalism that makes Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. Because no one else can now play Iron Man or at least this particular version of Iron Man, though they could change the actor and it would just be a whole new character. Commodity, Brand value. Two different things, but very important for uh, negotiating your pay. Helpful cheap! Warren Buffett basically said, and I am paraphrasing, people work within different fields of interest. When it comes to investing, you should invest in fields that you are most familiar with. Or as he has been quoted as saying, your circle of competence. So Buffett stresses that you should really focus on fields that you are particularly strong in. The more you understand that field, the better it is. As Buffett stresses, you should absolutely work uh, on investing companies that you know while you're researching, you understand. The reason you can do that is because you can look at the news or uh, the movement of that company and know when to buy and sell just based on you knowing how that company makes money and how that company and or field of interest would particularly lose money. He calls that particular process judging the future economics of a business. So basically understand the foundation of the company and or field of interest you are looking into and then, you know, that would be your foundation. And you could basically grow and rise from there by doing your due diligence and researching, researching, or researching. Though, if you are interested in investing in something that you're not familiar with, get in touch and hang out with people within that field of interest so you start learning that business. Or maybe get a job within that field of interest and work it for a few months, maybe a year, and learn the ins and outs. That's really up to you, but that's insane. Thank you for watching this video and supporting these traveling adventures of a resilient entertainer. Please like, comment, and share the video along with subscribing for future content. Have questions? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't work too hard, but be productive and look around at the people near you so you could work together, grow together, and rise together. Do you have what it takes to make a right, left? Oh dear.